Welcome back everybody to DC Economics, where I struggle to talk to a camera for about 10 to 15 minutes. And, um, <laughs> and today, I don't have any black t-shirts to wear, so I'm currently wearing a shirt. But today I want to talk about one specific indicator that I think is kind of hidden in plain sight that could really help in terms of predicting the stock market moves on the upside or on the downside with very, very, very good accuracy. Now, this is not necessarily talking about earnings reports, inflation data, or even interest rates. Uh, this one, I think, is a little bit bigger than that. Um, so let me show you on why I think global net liquidity might just be the market's best kept secret. Okay, so hopefully this is working. So let me just explain the value of global net liquidity. So global net liquidity is the lifeblood of the financial markets. It pretty much determines how much money is actually flowing through the system and available for investments. At its core, it shows the total liquidity provided by the world's major central banks minus the money being taken out of circulation. I've been using this indicator for, for many, many years, and I think it shows a huge correlation between the global between global net liquidity and the overall stock markets on the upside and on the downside. Now, breaking down the formula, we pretty much take the combined balance sheets of the world's central banks, such as the Federal Reserve, the Bank of Japan, the People's Bank of China, the European Central Bank, the Bank of England, which pretty what what pretty much gives us the total liquidity injected into the system. Now we subtract the reverse repo program or the RRP and the treasury general account. Now what exactly is the reverse repo program? It's a tool that the federal reserve uses to soak up excess liquidity. In simple terms, the fed offers to borrow cash from financial institutions overnight, giving them treasury securities as collateral. This pro this, this process temporarily takes money out of the financial system, reducing liquidity. The treasury account is pretty much the US government's bank account, and that is held at the Federal Reserve. Now, when this account grows, it just basically means that the treasury is collecting taxes or issuing bonds. It pulls money out of the broader financial system. Think of it as the government holding onto cash that could otherwise be circulating in the economy. Okay, so this is a chart of the NASDAQ 100 on a weekly time frame going all the way back to 1995. And the orange line is the global net liquidity. Now, you might just have to bear with me when I start to kind of show you this as I'm recording because I've done that many takes in terms of recording this um, because the, the graphs start to mess up in terms of the actual views. So hopefully this time it will actually work <laughs> but what you'll typically see is that there's large correlations when the market starts to struggle and then the central banks pretty much step in and print money so obviously in 2008 and 2009 what we saw is that the market obviously started to correct and we went and was going into during a large financial crisis and then the central banks pretty much stepped in and started to print more and more money and more and more liquidity now, when that started to happen, you can kind of see, you can kind of see the market obviously pick back up and they pretty much were on this path in terms of adding more and more liquidity into the actual market. Now you can kind of see as they, as the market started to struggle, they came in and started to print more and more money. And then they obviously, they try and, they try and taper this off. And then the market kind of like corrects and then they come in and stimulate again. Now, you can kind of use this for other different types of assets or over, over a longer period of time where you can kind of see these large correlations. Now, I, for some reason, right, I'm not going to, I'm not going to touch this. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, yeah. So pretty much what I'm going to kind of get in at is that as they start to print money, that money starts to find its way into risk assets and obviously you start to see bubbles and then they start to taper that uh, liquidity off by obviously int increasing interest rates. So what you can kind of do is overlay the Fed's fund funds rate. So you can kind of see, so basically, yeah, so let me just kind of break this down. So what central central banks pretty pretty much have two levers when it comes to stimulating the economy in terms of uh, contracting it or uh, expanding it. So one of them is uh, interest rates and the second is printing of money. 
Now, obviously, reducing interest rates is another way in terms of stimulating the overall economy. So what you'll pretty much see is that as interest rates start to climb, the markets starts to struggle and then they'll, they'll start to reduce their interest rates and then print more money to kind of get out of that falling economy. To, so they want to kind of provide more liquidity to small, medium and large, larger enterprises. So currently where we're currently are is here. So we see this massive divergence between global net liquidity and the current stock market. So as the time of writing, pretty much the, the, the NASDAQ is at an all time high. And as the uh, net liquidity is going back down all the way until uh, June 2024, and pretty much all the way back until 2020. So we've really started to remove a lot of the excess liquidity in, in the system. Now, what you can kind of see is that at the moment, we have this large expectation that when the Fed cuts rates again, that this is obviously going to create more liquidity. And that means it's risk on for more risk assets such as crypto and just the overall market. Now, if if history is any indication, just in terms of what happens in these in these scenarios where we have large divergences between total net liquidity and the overall stock market, one or two things pretty much need to happen, in my opinion, either that total net liquidity needs to go up, meaning that they're printing more and more money into the actual system, or the stock market needs to come down. So you can kind of see this throughout throughout history. So in 2018, the pretty much the same thing happened where total net liquidity started to come down. And then there was kind of a lagging effect where the market started to lag, and then it eventually started to come back come back down in line with total net liquidity. And then you you see these periods throughout history. Now, like I was saying, like if you go all the way back, you can kind of see how this, how total net liquidity pretty much is a very, very good indicator on a longer time on a longer term time frame in terms of what is what potentially could be happening in the financial markets. Now, if I was going to be taking any bets that these two paths are going to meet again. And that would either, like I was saying, that either means that total net liquidity needs to go up or the stock market needs to come down. Now, I'm not necessarily predicting a stock market crash anytime soon, but I'm just saying it's just something to be aware of. Now, a lot of people predict that the central banks are going to be cutting interest rates over the next couple of months. And now this might be the case. But the thing is, what, what you've got to kind of be careful of is that the market is very forward looking. So there's a lot of people who are anticipating rate cuts, what obviously would indicate more liquidity for risk assets. And that expectation is that everything is kind of priced to perfection. Now, if the Fed doesn't now, if the Fed doesn't necessarily cut rates, I think that we'll start to see more of a decline in terms of the overall market. Now, at the moment, we see that the market is heavily concentrated in just a few names. Now, if these companies start to struggle in terms of revenue, in terms of guidance, I think what we can kind of see is that the market would would pull back down in line with net liquidity. Now, this doesn't necessarily have to happen overnight, but I think there's a high probability of that actually happening. Now, when you actually look at the overall market and total net liquidity, these two paths do eventually cross. Now, it's just a matter of, I think it's just a matter of when, not, not a matter of if. So... The thing is, the narratives at the moment is that the Fed is going to reduce interest rates. So if we just add um, the interest rates over this, so obviously when they reduce the interest rates, that increases liquidity back into the market because people can borrow money at cheaper rates. And also a lot of people are kind of expecting that to happen. And obviously with that happening, people people think that is very, very bullish. Now, typically just for me, I think when you start to cut interest rates, it typically signifies something is breaking. Now, this is just my own personal opinion, but I think if you go back throughout history, you'll tip, you, you typically don't cut rates because the economy is super, super healthy. You typically cut rates because there is something breaking in the economy. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that we're going to see a market crash anytime soon, but I just think we should be looking at these large correlations in global net liquidity and interest rates. And every single time that this specifically happens, 
throughout the ta- throughout the course of history, we typically see corrections in the stock markets. Now, hopefully, this video has been informative. Now, I know I need to get better in terms of using TradingView and obviously explaining my thought processes on certain things. But um, but anyway, I hope this has been useful and you can kind of use global net liquidity in terms of all overlaying it on your own charts and just seeing the large divergences in terms of price movements. To the four people who are watching me, I hope you're having a lovely day and I'll see you all later. <laughs> Bye-bye.